What's up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the brand new 2024 Volvo XC60 courtesy of Younger Volvo in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so we are in this one today because there is one major change for the 2024 model year. There are a couple new colors actually as well. We do happen to have one of those new colors, so I'll be touching on that when we get to the exterior portion of this review, of course. And this one is built in Sweden, which of course is pretty darn rare, at least here in the US. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing and so essentially there are three different trim configurations for the 2024 xc60 you have the core starting at forty six thousand four hundred and fifty dollars plus for fifty thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars and lastly the ultimate starting at fifty six thousand four hundred dollars and when it comes to that one major change for the 2024 model year that was not pricing for the front wheel drive that was pricing for the all-wheel drive because all-wheel drive is now standard across the board for the xc so that is the major change for 2024. But ultimately, when it comes to the power plant for all of this trim levels, it is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder with a mild hybrid system, putting out 247 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque, power sent to all four wheels through an eight speed automatic, zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 6.5 seconds, with MPG numbers coming in at 23 in the city, 29 on the highway, taking premium unleaded fuel. And so before before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our XC60, did want to mention the couple of kind of driving modes for the XC60. So if you were to go to settings within the infotainment screen here, we'll get more into that screen later in the video, but there's actually a steering sensitivity mode where you can adjust the heaviness of the steering feel. If you want it more of a traditional SUV look, don't even touch it. But if you want it more of a performance oriented SUV, it is supposed to weighten up the steering feel quite substantially. So that is pretty cool. And there's also an off-road drive driving mode as well. So I'm actually gonna turn that steering feel on real quick. And now have it got that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the XC60 here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, in three, two, one, go! There it is. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> I kinda like the sound too. Yeah, that's definitely, you're not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. What I noticed uh, from the get-go when I first pulled out onto the highway is there's no like turbo lag or anything like that because of that mild hybrid system. And that's something I've kind of been griping on lately because I just reviewed a couple of Volkswagens and there was turbo lag. And I thought to myself, man, if there was only a mild hybrid system like BMW does, like Mercedes does, like Volvo does, there wouldn't be that turbo lag anymore. So that is the case in this thing. I love it, instant acceleration. So absolutely no issues there. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 13.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.6 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 is your stopping distance goes, that is going to come in at 118 feet, which is a dang good number without a doubt. So that is like a sports sedan. Typically with SUVs, you find 120s, if not 130s. I've seen as bad as 139 feet in a three row SUV, although this isn't a three row SUV, but still 118 feet really is sports sedan good. So absolutely no issues there. Then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're going to get a double wishbone type front suspension. In the back, integral link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine. I will say Hagerstown has some dang smooth roads, but it has been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. As far as steering sensitivity goes, I love the heavier steering feel, and that's because I put it in that particular steering feel mode. Again, you don't have to put it in that, and then it kind of steers like a traditional SUV. It's a much lighter steering feel, but if you put it in that steering feel firm mode is exactly what it's called, it is a much heavier feel. It feels a lot more like a Tesla or a performance vehicle rather than an SUV, which I personally prefer. So that's why I got it in there. As far as cabin noise goes, this is the perfect test right now. I'm going 55 miles per hour. You guys can let me know if you hear any wind noise or exterior road noise coming into the cabin. I personally don't hear a heck of a lot, so that is perfectly fine for me. Touching on visibility, I can see this Ford Ranger in my rear view mirror perfectly fine. So 
100% no issues there and I kind of like how the second row headrest tucked down if there's no second row passenger so that is a big plus to visibility as well but not to mention when it comes to forward visibility rain sensing windshield wipers actually do come standard across the board so whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you there so one last thing you got to worry about and if you're looking for that head-up display that projects your speed speed limit to safety features up onto your windshield again assisting with forward visibility go with the ultimate trim level so that's why our plus trim is not going to unfortunately have that today so anyways that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and find a cool spot and let's take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 volvo xc60 all right so here she is you guys the new 2024 volvo xc60 finished in vapor gray one of the uh, couple new colors that are available for the 2024 XC60. So this is what it looks like. Kind of got a sage green slash gray tint to it. So in my opinion, it definitely looks good, but let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter Y, indicating that the XC60 is still built and assembled in Sweden, which is pretty darn cool. Let's go ahead and start up front on this one. You will find a bright or dark theme to that front grille. And really that theme continues on through the uh the remainder of the exterior of the xc60 so you're either going to get gloss black accents or silver and chrome accents essentially that's what that is but to the sides led headlights do come standard with led thor's hammer daytime running lights in typical volvo fashion there automatic feature as well along with automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you though so definitely a very nice feature there and led fog lights you guys can see that down towards the front lip there in the corners they actually do come standard on the 2024 xc60 so i feel like that didn't always used to be but i love that they are standard and again they are leds as opposed to the halogen bulbs as well so that is pretty darn cool but again we're going to have the dark theme throughout this one so keep that in mind but as always that pretty much rounds out the front let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of this one black or silver roof rails yet again bright or dark theme black or silver window surrounds as well you will find rear privacy glass coming standard on the xc60 love that body colored or gloss black side mirrors again bright or dark theme there power adjustable side mirrors they will be heated with led integrated turn signals and one of my favorite features of the volvo xc60 is there's a deer you see him you see him running away Anyways, get sidetracked there, but it's actually the body colored side skirts and fender surrounds that are actually body colored because traditionally with SUVs, they're going to be matte black as opposed to body colored. So I am a big fan of that and this deer is still staring at me. Anyways, then take a look down at the wheel setup. 18 inch double five spoke alloys will come standard. 19 inch diamond cut alloys coming with the plus. However, we do have an optional wheel configuration, but I will say 20 inch diamond cut alloys then coming with the ultimate. So again, there are some optional wheels if you wanted to really make it your own. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, body colored shark fin antenna, just below that that rear spoiler with the integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper you got the volvo lettering spelled out horizontally definitely looks good as well and of course led taillights because it's a volvo and it's always extremely safe so added illumination there i love that chrome or gloss black accents on the bottom portion of that rear bumper obviously you guys are looking at the gloss black because we have the dark theme of course and just underneath of it all you will find dual exhaust outlets and you know what Volvo is not even pretending like it is integrated into the rear bumper now, so I love that. It definitely looks good in the back there, but dual exhaust outlets tucked away. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the XC60, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is actually a hands-free 
power tailgate that comes standard for all trim levels across the board. So if you have your hands full, simply just kick your foot underneath of the rear bumper there. It's going to automatically open up for you. There's a button on the key fob though. There's also a button on the tailgate itself. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 22.4 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 63.3 cubic feet then. There is some cargo lighting back there. There are grocery bag hooks as well, some tie-down anchors. There's a 12-volt power outlet. There's some netted storage. There is a cargo cover as well. And there's a nice little first aid kit, which I know Lexus always does as well. And Volvo, of course, as well, since they're known for safety. And if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire as opposed to the fix-a-flat, which I, of course, personally prefer. But now, let's go ahead and make our way up to the rear legroom. That's going to come in at a very respectable 38 inches. For reference, I mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. There is rear ventilation for those rear passengers, of course. There is a rear center armrest with cup holders. You have dual phone charging ports back there. And there is actually a package option where you can get heated rear seats, which we do actually have today. So spoil the rear passengers a little bit. I love that. Then make your way up to the front seats though. Leather seating is gonna come with the plus and ultimate. And again, we have the plus trim level with us here today. Power adjustable front seats will come standard. Also coming standard though, heated front seats. So gotta love that. Ultimate trim is gonna add ventilated front seats as well as a power adjustable passenger seat with memory settings for that passenger seat as well, which is pretty cool. But overall, seat comfort is perfectly fine, actually, believe it or not. So I've had no issues. And my very favorite part of the seating, I don't wanna forget to mention it, is the flag of Sweden found on the passenger seat. So nice little Easter egg there for all Volvos essentially. But anyways, then making our way to the steering wheel. It is two-toned. I always love that with Volvo. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped and it is actually heated as well. And then making our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. Got your Volvo logo on the one side. When you flip it over, there's nothing but all of your buttons are located on the side of the key. So you go lock, unlock the button to pop power tailgate there, but it is all keyless enter with a turn knob start. So I'm just gonna simply put my front of the brake and turn this knob to the right. And by the way, if you wanna turn it off, also turn it to the right. Never turn it to the left, always turn it to the right. But anyways, what started up when it comes to that gauge cluster, it is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. Always looks amazing in Volvos. You got your speedometer all the way to the left, tachometer is on your right and the navigation if I had set it up, which I didn't, it's going to be displayed front and center. It's essentially gonna give you a map set up, kind of like BMW does with their gauges as well. So overall outside temperature, you got how many miles you have left until you hit empty. So overall, the gauge cluster looks perfectly fine. Let's say then making our way to overall interior quality, there is a panoramic sunroof that actually does come standard for all trim levels. So love that. Frameless rear view mirror with home light controls for up to three different garage doors found just below that rear view mirror, of course. Four zone climate control coming with the ultimate. Otherwise, dual zone climate control is going to come standard, which honestly is plenty fine. Uh, the one thing I haven't noticed is I don't see a wireless phone charger for whatever reason. So perhaps Volvo could add that in the future, but just in front of the shifter, you have a little bit of rubberized storage. You have a couple cup holders just to the right of the shifter there and a 12 volt power outlet. Within the center armrest, there is uh, an okay amount of storage. You actually have a couple charging ports within there as well. And within the glove box, I like the kind of, uh, I don't know what you call it, a felt kind of finish to inside of that glove box. So that is pretty darn cool. But also like the matte wood trim, it's kind of like a beach wood trim found just above the passenger side glove box, just below the infotainment screen here. Also like the very high quality aluminum speaker covers for this Harman Kardon sound system, which is optional, but we'll test out that sound system in a little bit. But overall, I love the interior quality. One of the coolest things, again, uh, about most Volvos now is to turn on the interior lighting, you simply just press on the actual light gently. So it's kind of like a touch screen light, if you will. And then to open and close the actual power panoramic moonroof here, you just slide your finger back to open it and slide it forward to close it, which I think makes a whole lot of sense as well. So I like the way they did that. But overall, interior quality is perfectly fine. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. You got a nine inch vertical color touchscreen display that looks amazing. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system though, also coming standard. You can check out your climate control information up there, your heated seat buttons, your heated steering wheel button is gonna be up there as well along with your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound system, like I alluded to, there is a standard sound system where that's gonna come with the core and the plus, but if you were to go with that ultimate, you will get a 14 speaker Harman Kardon sound system that's available 
for our plus trim and we do have that so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one yeah definitely nothing wrong with that sound system ton of bass plenty of clarity not my very favorite sound system but it's dang good nonetheless so really nice sound system for the xc60 but last thing i want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the xc60 in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board and if you kind of put your finger if you tap your finger on it there's a option for a 360 degree monitor as well giving you that bird's eye view which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start iihs top safety pick plus which is the very highest rating given by iihs that pretty much says it all right there front side side curtain airbags do come standard you got a driver's knee airbag up front as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert autonomous emergency braking collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection and cyclist detection and a large animal detection like those deer we saw earlier driver attention monitoring system lane departure warning lane keep assist rear parking sensors and runoff road mitigation as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of the XC60, Volvo has always been known for incredible safety, and that is still the case to this day for all of their vehicles. They are all IIHS top safety pick pluses, which again is the highest rating that you can get. So that has not changed. I still love the design of the XC60, really all Volvos in general. I think they do a great job with their design. Digital gauges are great as well. Having said that, I wouldn't mind if they were a little more customizable. If you can change the loadout kind of like uh like audi and volkswagen do for example uh the only room for improvement i could think of there's two things actually uh the lack of wireless phone charger i couldn't find one in here and i don't think there is one available just given the space that i'm looking at here and the reliability has always been questionable with Volvo, and uh, hopefully that changes in the future. I mean, it could. Uh, just take a look at Consumer Reports, though. Don't take my word for it there, because I don't have this car long term. It's just temporary, so look at Consumer Reports for that one. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the XC60 in the comments section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in the new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.